Today we're here at Hardware Pioneers 2023 and I'm joined by Werner from Koitech and it's great to see you. Great to see you. Now today we're going to be looking at some products that they're showing which are the, and if I remember correctly, it's the OTI range of power monitors and the software that comes with it. So, exactly. so, so could you just go through very quickly what these things are and how they work? So basically this is a programmable power supply, uh, the new version OTAs 0 to 25 volts plus minus 5 amps. This is a two quadrant power supply so we can both sync and source current which means that we can use it to discharge batteries. This is a battery even though it looks like a capacitor. It's, an Ishikon, it, it's an Ishikon battery. Um, so we can discharge a battery, create a battery discharge curve that we can then use to emulate this battery back as part of the application here which we can see here so this is this is a coin cell yeah. with the open circuit voltage internal resistance and then you just choose where you want to be on this curve you can either let it discharge or you can actually say i want to let it stay at a fixed point which you cannot do with a regular battery it can't simply stop discharging so that's what we can do inside the the software and the let me just quickly show you the um, profiler because that's what's actually creating the profile. So you connect your battery, select your discharge current characteristics and then let it go until the battery is empty. And then you have this battery graph instantly. And so that's quite useful for characterizing the battery that you want to use in the products. Yes. That is the um, main thing for battery. There is a second part which is equally important for firmware developers and it's the capability of synchronizing current consumption either from a power box or from the emulated battery together with UART outputs from your IoT device which we can actually see here as well that you, you have the outputs from so these are different parts of the code that you can select these are outputs log outputs coming from the device which is then shown together let me just put this off time stamped together with the current consumption so you can see instantly that this is what i output from my device this is the current consumption if you have a spike somewhere what did i actually do right around this area either you select down here or your performance selection here it will automatically select the uart output that corresponds to that in time. Now, it's quite funny you mention that because we recently did a video on Electromaker where I had an IoT cellular device and I was trying to figure out a way of monitoring the power, uh, the power consumption during different areas. And I think over there, we, we saw an example where you showed the, the, uh, the cellular power consumption during the code as it was, as it was communicating with the network service. Same, th same thing for Wi-Fi. You're gonna connect to Wi-Fi and it's, there will be a spike going up and you will see that it's connected. It's the same thing. So this is just an Arduino BLE beacon. The Argon over there, same thing with Wi-Fi. We do exactly the same thing. We measure the current consumption all the time. Uh, and then we go back post-processing. When you look at this, you just say, okay, I output this, but I'm going to connect. So you need to add those to your code. Most of the time you already have a pretty good idea but at least you want to know that this is what's happening. That's the important thing that the regular power analyzer will typically not capture serial data or other data. It might capture an IO pin. Ah, so you're actually capturing serial data. Yes, yeah, so it's capturing that serial data with the expansion port over here. So that's why this is actually coming from the same hardware. It's timestamped the same way as analog data. So it's definitely in sync with the energy measurement and that's the important part that, that's a key part where we started before we even got to the battery um, emulation and simulation part that was added later now you've got different products in this range yes. so could you just show us uh, the different products and how they kind of differ so these are the two ones they look very much identical it's an OTI arc and it's an OTI ace this is a new product come out end of last year end of 2022 this one has been out since 2017. This has slightly less 
capabilities, 0.5 to 5 volts. Uh, it's, it's 5 amps max out, but it can sync up to minus 2.5. And, and then this output is not isolated from chassis ground. This one is completely floating. The AC is floating, so you can connect several in series. Uh, and there is a difference in sample rate as well. This one samples up to 4 kilo samples a second. This one samples up to 50 kilo samples a second externally now. We're sampling 250 kilo samples a second internally. That's, that's what the uh, ADC is capable of. So it's, it's, and so it's quite a substantial difference in, yes. in, in the amount of like the, 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 the ability to refine the measurements that you can take at certain parts of your code. Yeah. In um, time time wise, yes, the samples are um, are smaller. Uh, resolution wise, we're roughly the same. It's 400 picoamp uh, step size, 0.4 nanoamps of uh, resolution on uh, the current measurements. That's quite small. For, for, um, that's very small. <laughs> it's smaller than most people expect. Then there is an, an amount of noise, but the resolution is that, and the accuracy is 0.05%. 0.05%? Yeah, that, that's quite impressive. Plus 25 nanoamps of offset, potentially. So that's typically what gets you when you're trying to measure 100 or 200 nanoamps. This is also what gets you with the DMM, a regular multimeter, 10 mega ohms of input resistance at three volts at 300 nanoamps. So you're leaking current everywhere when you're trying to measure it. And this is super high impedance, so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, one thing I also wanted to mention as well was that, um, was because I, th I think the, the, the product really is 50% of, of what it is that you're offering. It's also the software as well that, that comes with these units. That's the main important part, because yeah. we have no buttons whatsoever. You have only one way of interacting with this. It's through the software, which you can script using Python or any other language. There is an API for it, uh, so you can access all that. We use it in the factory internally to manufacture the units. We're using the OT3 software and a script that will talk to a, an ACE or an ARC in the fixture, and then you calibrate the device on the test using that. And so, and so you can actually use this in far bigger projects. So you could, you could take, like you say, a Python script that can connect to a remote server, dump the data out as it picks something up. So that actually sounds really, really practical. It is. It's very practical. It's very versatile. You can, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with this when most people will only use a small part of it. But the toolbox is, is a large one. So you can do a lot of different things. And we don't expect every single customer to use every single feature. But it's, there are lots of different use cases and different people. Hardware engineers would use it one way. Software engineers use it one way. And this is the important part that we've tried really hard to make it usable for software developers not used to power analyzers. Well, all I can say is that what I've seen here is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, it was a pleasure meeting you, Werner. And for those who are watching, you can go ahead and get more information about this in the description below.